Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well. This is Lifestyle Critic where we break down movies and TV shows into their core elements and in this video we are going to be reviewing The Chronicles of Narnia, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader or Treader, however you want to pronounce it, which is the third and final movie within this particular universe franchise of the Narnia films and this one really does return to its magic fantasy epic quest roots as the second movie was obviously a lot more action based, this kind of returns it back to the things that we love about the franchise and it was also the first movie not to be co-produced and co-funded by Disney as they left due to budgetary disagreements and Fox entered instead and were the co-producers of this film. Obviously now, since then, Disney and Fox are now under one umbrella so all three films are now within the Disney franchise but at least at the time, it was a pretty big deal with the fact that Disney were leaving the movie. Also, the fact that this movie doesn't have Susan and Peter as main characters is a little bit different as well. But, you know, that being said, the fact that it returns to his magic fantasy epic roots and has a really killer storyline just really does make up for it. And I cannot wait to break it down for you in this movie review. So the storyline in Voyager of the Dawn Treader is definitely one of its strong points, so let's break it down now. So Peter and Susan now live in the USA, whereas Edmund and Lucy now live with their insufferable and annoying cousin, Eustace, and one day these three characters get transported into the world of Narnia. In Narnia, three years have passed since the events in Prince Caspian, the previous movie, and the three characters find themselves on a bit of an epic voyage quest with King Caspian and his crew. They go on various missions and quests with them where they have to try and free some slaves, try to cure an evil mist that is taking over Narnia, and they also have to try to reunite the seven swords of the lords onto Aslan's table. But it's a pretty epic, fast-paced and gripping narrative throughout this movie and it also does explore characters' desires and temptations on top of everything else. So as a package from a storyline point of view, it is very, very compelling. So from a cast and characters point of view, unlike Prince Caspian, which pretty much had all of the different characters in that movie, this time it hasn't got everyone, but it's got a few of them, but it still works really, really well. So let's break them down one by one. So first up we have Georgie Henley, who is back as the Lucy character. She's still the heart of Narnia. She absolutely loves this world. She kind of gets a little bit more involved in all of the battle sequences and the actual epic quests that are on hand as well. And she also explores her temptation of beauty and the inferiority that she felt with her older sister Susan. So that's really, really interesting. Next up we have Skander Keynes, who is also back as the Edmund character, and he is really able to step out of the shadow of his older brother Peter, and he's definitely able to become his own heroic character in his own right. He also has a really interesting conflict at points as well with the King Caspian character, which obviously his brother Peter had in the previous movie. And we also have the return of the White Witch character, still kind of playing on his mind, and we also explore the temptation of greed through this character as well. So it's a really great character arc for the Edmund character. Next up we have Ben Barnes, who is now King Caspian, and his acting has improved tremendously since the last movie, and actually he's pretty brilliant in this film. He's the main lead heroic leader figure, even more so than Edmund and Lucy, as all of the characters really do follow what King Caspian says. So not only has he got that pressure on his shoulders, but he also has to try to fix everything that's gone wrong with Narnia and also be the king that everyone needs as well. So this character has actually got quite a lot of layers to him as well. We then have Simon Pegg, who is now the new voice, replacing Eddie Izzard as the swashbuckling mouse Reapy Cheap. He has a really nice interaction with the Eustace character. Speaking of Eustace, we have Will Poulter playing the insufferable Eustace character who is just incredibly annoying but that's totally how the audience is supposed to feel, so the actor actually does do a really good job in terms of making this character just incredibly irritating. And in terms of a character arc, this character goes on a really interesting arc as well in terms of being really dismissive of this world, just wanting to go back into the real world, being very spoilt in the real world as well, and kind of bringing that aspect into this movie, but then he becomes a bit of a dragon and is really able to help the different characters in some of the most challenging situations so where this character was from the beginning to where he is at the end is actually really, really great. We then have Aslan the Lion, who's a little bit more of a voice of reasoning in terms of people's memories 
and is also trying to help the characters from a bit of a far away point of view. We also have the other Narnians who have obviously developed a lot since the first movie and like I said they listen more to the King Caspian character than the previous King Edmund and the Queen Lucy character. We also have the other lords that they're trying to find all of the swords for so the main quest of this movie is all about trying to find the seven swords so all of the different laws that they encounter throughout the movie is really, really interesting. We then have the mist, not necessarily its own character, but definitely a presence that is trying to take over Narnia as well. That's kind of like the big bad that they're trying to defeat. And through that, they meet loads of other different characters. For example, the characters that imprison some of them, the wizard that they meet in the mysterious castle as well. We also have some cameo appearances from Peter and Susan. There's one or two sequences where you see these characters coming back and I thought it was really interesting as well as there's very few cameo appearances as well from Tilda Swinton's White Witch character yet they definitely put this in all of the marketing material so you're led to believe that this character is a lot more prominent like she was in the first movie but actually she just has a few appearances which I thought was really really funny so from a cast and characters point of view even though it's not got everyone back in this movie in big roles they are pretty decent in this film. So from a visuals point of view, this is definitely the best that Narnia's ever looked. You really do feel like you've escaped into this magical quest-based world. It is a little bit end of the world -y, not necessarily in the fighting way that Prince Caspian was, but just the fact that, you know, there's this big epic looming quest that is on everyone's shoulders. So you definitely do feel the weight of that. All of the scenes in the ship look really, really cool. All of the different islands that they visit and all of the magical stuff that happens on those islands look really, really cool. All of the battle and fight sequences that happen, especially the first one, where they're trying to free all of the slaves. Those scenes look absolutely brilliant. Eustace the dragon looks really, really cool as well. And the book of spells that Lucy finds is really, really cool as well. That truly does add the magical aspect into this film as well. And then finally, the Narnians themselves look really, really cool as well. There are some hilarious sequences with the Narnians mocking the Eustace character which I thought was absolutely brilliant. So from a visuals point of view, this film is absolutely spectacular. So from a comparison point of view, I'm sure you can tell, I really, really enjoy this movie. I do feel like the first movie is absolutely brilliant in its own right, but I do feel like this film is definitely on the same level as it's very, very epic based, very magical. I love all of the quest aspects to it. And it's ironic, even though this movie wasn't co-produced by Disney, I think there's loads of different comparisons you can make with the very popular parts of the Caribbean franchise, especially all of the scenes on the ships, all of the quests that they have on the different islands. I feel like it's very inspired by that franchise as well. And speaking of other big adaptation book franchises, you know, I do feel like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings definitely is in another league of its own. But I think this movie is definitely very similar to those. So from a comparison point of view, it's actually a very strong entry in the movie world. So overall, I really thoroughly enjoy the third movie as part of the Chronicles of Narnia franchise. Such a dramatic improvement from Prince Caspian, both from a storyline point of view, both from an epic quest point of view, and the magical fantasy point of view as well. So much better than I thought it was going to be. And I'm just really gutted that they didn't get to continue the franchise in terms of the other four books as part of the C.S. Lewis Chronicles of Narnia world. But you know, that being said, hopefully when Netflix gets to do their own versions of it, it will be equally spectacular. And I can't wait to see what's gonna happen with that. But you know, this movie had a brilliant storyline, fantastic character arcs, brilliant acting, brilliant visuals. And so for all of those reasons, I have to give it a solid seven out of 10. I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.